Un Academy. Let's crack it. Hi, I'm Shelja Beria here with Un Academy. I secured All India Rank Six in CLAT 2020, and I'm now studying at NUJS. To all students giving CLAT in 2021, I wish you all the best. I will be sharing with you my own experience of preparing for and CLAT cracking CLAT. I hope this helps aspirants for CLAT 2022 and 2023 in their own preparation. So I began my preparation in class 11 itself after my board examination. I think that the two-year preparation time was integral in helping me crack CLAT on my first attempt. So for those of you who are considering CLAT uh, and law as a field, I think now is the time that you uh, consider how you would want to uh, start your preparation, especially for those who are planning for CLAT 2023. I think at this point you can decide and you can start your preparation and that is going to give you a great advantage and might even help you to crack CLAT in your first. Year. So the first year of preparation is the best time to get introduced to the basic concepts, particularly in subjects such as quantitative aptitude, logical and legal reasoning. So owing to the new pattern, many students may think that the concept of topic-based preparation for quant or principal fact based questions for legal reasoning are redundant but this is a misconception as i think practice even in the old format goes a long way in developing an understanding of concepts that are directly relevant to the new format also when you are preparing in the old format there is a lot more structure to the kind of topics that you are required to do and as you go through each of the topics you realize that you are feeling more prepared even for the new form uh, for example in our case we had received notification of the changes in format only in january 2020 by which time we had completed a significant portion of our preparation so this was the time that we were going to start giving mocks and now we realized we had to give mocks in the new format Uh, but what i found was that my old preparation had prepared me to the extent where i felt confident even giving mocks in the new format and then i was able to adapt my preparation uh, according to the new format through these mocks instead of starting my preparation all over again based on the new pattern so while uh, you have the advantage of knowing what the pattern is like even as you start preparation make sure that you don't um don't give less importance to concepts and topic wise preparation which was a larger focus in the old format but will which, which will definitely help your preparation even in the new form so um at in addition i would say that the first leg of preparation is also the best time to focus not merely on learning formulae and laws but also on on understanding the reasoning which is applicable to each of these concepts so at this stage you must keep question always keep asking questions and don't just ask what needs to be done to solve the question don't just ask which formula you need to apply but also why you would be applying that formula so when you ask the why then you realize that you are solving certain things in certain, in a certain manner not just because it's what was told to you but because it makes sense and once you start developing that ability to reason out your answers you will see that it will help and be applicable to every topic in the new format so i think this is what works most for the new format that once you feel confident in your own ability to apply logic to apply reasoning then you will see that you are uh, improving in each and every topic also for those who are attempting clat in 2023 and will be doing so right after their boards being well placed in preparation in class 11 itself will go a very long way in reducing the stress and anxiety of two major exams that you are bound to feel in class 12 so what happens is that in class 12 you start feeling the pressure of boards uh, your schools will largely focus on board uh, oriented preparation and you start feeling like you don't have enough time for class and since your admission will not be based on the boards you will feel very alienated with respect to other students so remember that the best way to deal with this is to prepare right now class 11 um 
uh, students tend to take it very casually because they think that uh, it, they need the sort of break after their boards. But remember that a good preparation in class 11 will help you a lot in dealing with the stress of class 12. Because in class 12, you will begin to feel not just like you have to give CLAT or have to give both, but that you have to give both of them together. So make sure that you, you at least develop a surface level understanding of all concepts and topics. You understand where you're falling uh, behind and you start correcting these issues from the beginning of class 12. So in class 11, you developed an understanding. You've understood what you need to cover for CLAT and then you can schedule yourself well in class 12. So pace yourself because it's a long ride and you might feel very burned out by the end. So make sure that when you feel freer, when you're more motivated, right now you've just chosen that you want to get to law school and you will be giving CLAT. And this is a point when you put that focus into something productive and you ensure that you have this understanding of at least what needs to be done and you start doing it and you cover a major part of things so that in class 12, you can take it relatively easy and you can balance with your books. So now I'll tell you how to cover each of the sections individually. So we'll start with logical reasoning. Now for logical reasoning, it's important to develop your mind. And this is the part of the preparation that most helps with a new pattern also. So I would say that uh, you should start by solving questions such as LSAT 1000 or GMAT type questions. They are largely verbal reasoning and uh, analytical reasoning questions. So when you're attempting these sets, many of them will be available online or you can uh, obtain them from various other sources. So when you're attempting, when you start attempting these questions, you will see that you're having trouble uh, finishing it in time. Or if you're able to finish it in time, then you will definitely face issues with accuracy. So don't get uh, worried if in initial attempts show a lower accuracy or if initial attempts uh, tend to indicate that you are not doing well in these questions. When you start attempting, time yourself and see what kind of time you are taking and try to bring, bring yourself within the assigned time. Also, something that is very important is that after you attempt the questions, and you've reached the stage where you're checking the questions, don't just mechanically take the options that are correct and see that, okay, I marked A, but the, the answer is C. Make sure that you understand also where you're going wrong. So correct those issues. Consult your teachers if you're unable to understand on your own. So when you're clearing doubts, you should focus not only on which option you mark, but also on the reasoning you applied to arrive at the answer. So when you see that you've marked an answer wrong, you don't just have to ask why you marked the answer wrong, but in what way was your reasoning for marking that answer incorrect? And what would be the correct reasoning to apply to this question so that you would apply, uh, arrive at the correct answer? So key question, this is the stage when you have the time and you have uh, less stress. So you have the ability to know that you are wrong or that you're falling back. And this is the time when you correct these issues. So keep questioning the answers till you yourself are convinced that they are correct. Now, this is something that you should apply to all other sections as well. This is something that I continuously did. Uh, for me, uh, while attempting a question, it was not just uh, uh, important that I got the correct answer but also that when the answers were in fact wrong, I knew exactly where I was going wrong. So I, after I read the answers, after I understood what the correct answer was, I would have to ensure that I myself was convinced that the answer that is marked on the paper and that I failed to mark is in fact the correct answer. So what happens here is that the next time you solve even something similar, you don't just uh, make the same mistake again, but now you know what is the correct way of reasoning and what is the correct way to come to the answer. Now we come to English. Uh, with English, one of the major issues that you will face, specifically with the new pattern, is timing. So time is key to ensure that you have a good English section. 
um what we do when we are attempting english questions that which happen with most of us when we started with a new pattern was that we have had a propensity to rush through the passage without understanding we had given ourselves this time limit where we knew that the passage had to be attempted in 5 minutes so that meant that we had to read it in 2 minutes but for many of us 2 minutes was not enough time so in trying to finish reading in 2 minutes we um read the words but we didn't process them enough to understand any now uh, the key flaw in this strategy is that one of two things will happen you will either struggle to attempt the questions at all so you will require a second reading which will mean that instead of 2 minutes or uh, the 3 or 4 minutes that it would have taken to read the passage thoroughly in the first attempt you are taking 2 plus 3 minutes so it's taking you around 5 minutes to just read the passage just because you were trying to save that extra 1 minute that would have taken to understand in the first attempt so make sure that you start with a slower reading also uh if you are in fact able to attempt questions with this super fast reading what may happen is that you will attempt the questions in a similar rush and end up compromising greatly on accuracy so what you should be doing is start slow find out what your minimum time with maximum accuracy is and set deadlines that are slightly lower than this minimum time so reduce your time gradually instead of reaching a set goal in the beginning this is also something for which early preparation makes a huge difference so if you are able to keep doing this then you will see that by the time you reach the stage of your preparation where you are actually attempting mocks then you will see that um, you you taking less time to attempt the questions considering that the new pattern has a large amount of reading so this will mean that when you are attempting mocks you are saving a lot of time and at the same time you are not compromising accuracy because you corrected those defects when you were just maybe attempting section tests so now we move on to the legal section of this paper uh, so for what we cover next are legal reasoning and current affairs so for one part of legal reasoning i would say that uh, you do exactly what you've been doing for english and logical reasoning because you must understand that with a new pattern they're not testing your previous knowledge but what they are testing is um how you apply uh, what is written in the passage and that is something that you learn through your english and uh, logical reasoning preparation uh for the second part of it i think that practicing principle fact based questions is also very important because even though these questions don't tell, tell you directly what will be asked in the paper they help you understand um certain things on how the law works understanding that you will be able to apply to the rest of your preparation so uh, for legal reasoning make sure that you are practicing principle fact based questions as well especially when you are in class 11 and you have the time to do so so you will gradually develop an understanding of how different aspects of the law such as constitutional law contract act um, tort law how each of these work and what are some basic principles that are underlying them so these principles will always be part even of the questions that you are trying to attempt also make sure that when you are attempting questions you are not doing so with a focus of um, uh, you are not doing so uh, with your own personal knowledge in mind because there can always be gaps in your own knowledge uh, in clat with a new pattern what they are always asking you is what is written in the question even with the law uh, it's more about being able to apply what you're reading rather than knowing everything so make sure that you're able to apply what you're reading when you're attempting the legal reasoning section next we come to current affairs uh, this is the section that scares people the most so i would say that it's very important uh, at this point to um, develop the habit of reading a newspaper uh, so now this sounds like a very arduous task but the way to go about this is try to develop this habit from your first year of preparation itself so that by the time you are panicking about current affairs in the last stage you already have this idea of what the news looks like 
and how you're supposed to analyze it. You must also understand that the new pattern uh, focuses not on facts or very difficult uh, knowledge questions, but it's more about how you're being able to analyze the news or how you're able to understand analysis of the news. So the newspaper reading, uh, the early contributes to this. Uh, to this end, I would also say that um, uh, when you're reading the newspaper, uh, in order to develop the habit, what you could start with is reading those sections that are interesting to you, such as uh, most people who start reading the newspaper try to start with the sports section or the entertainment section because that is something that people will always find more interesting than, say, politics or crime. Uh, also, make sure that you don't waste your time on news articles that are more of everyday occurrences than major news events. Um, uh, this is what you do in the early uh, stages of preparation. So, at this time, you don't really have to focus on particular questions or how questions will be framed, but rather on developing an understanding and interest in the news itself. At a later stage of preparation, that is in class 12, by the end of class 12, you will feel the need to focus your preparation more. So this is when you start preparing lists of what topics are important and start having notes on these topics. Now, some people may pre prefer physical written down notes and this is very helpful in terms of telling you what topics you should focus on and what parts of those topics you feel are important enough to write down. But also helpful is to simply pick a topic and then look for all the information you can find on this topic. So for doing that, what you should do is um, when, you think, when you pick a topic, then to think about it on your own. To think what kind of questions could arise on those topics. To think what you're curious about on that topic. What you yourself want to know. And then start from there and keep moving uh, deeper within the topic till you feel like you've covered everything. Now, when you're doing this, make sure that you don't need to have a very extensive list or like pages and pages of notes. But what is more important is that whatever you cover, you cover thoroughly and you cover it with a deep interest and understanding. So what I did was on my last uh, last day before CLAN, I picked just 20 topics or maybe even less. I think it was 15 topics and I decided that I have to pick those topics which are most likely to come. Because I know that there, I have lists of 50 or 100 topics as well. But at the end of the day, uh, the CLAD paper setters cannot cover more than 15 topics in the actual paper. Even if you take both legal reasoning and current affairs, which are largely the sections which uh, use current affairs and general knowledge question, then at most could they cover uh, 15 topics. So based on that idea, I have made a list of my own and that list was based on uh, understanding certain factors. Uh, one thing was what news items were important. So that would be the 50 page list, uh, the 50 topic list as well. But now I had to see what news items had stayed in the public imagination for a long time. What news items were also susceptible to analysis and would uh, maybe affect even future events. So based on that, I prepared this list uh, and then on that last day, those were the only topics I revised. So even if I later felt like I was missing something out, I tried to fit them into those topics and find my focus my preparation on those topics. They helped me avoid panic also and they helped me be well prepared also. So I would say that while this is helpful for, a last, uh, for the last leg of preparation, it could also be helpful while you are initially preparing current affairs lists and topics if you would just pick 10 to 15 topics each month and then go on for, from there. So if you have 15 topics a month, that in itself is covering a huge chunk of your syllabus. And if you're spending like maybe even a couple of hours on each topic, then that just means spending 2-3 hours um, uh, into 15 so that's like that's like spending two three hours every week and having it having around 15 topic topics ready by the end of the month so this is something that i think would really help with your current affairs preparation and lastly for math as i said earlier uh, in class 11 make sure that you focus on understanding the different topics and subjects that are there such as time distance speed um, 
there is um, time and walk ratios, uh, even data uh, interpretation. Make sure that you understand the concepts that drive each of these topics and you're able to start solving questions on them. So that when you attempt mocks, then you already know what your strengths and weaknesses are. And then you can focus your prep preparation even more. So lastly, we move on to how to attempt an actual mock. So for that, it's important that in an actual mock, you try, uh, if, when you're attempting mocks, then you try to simulate the conditions of the actual exam. So make sure that you set your desk and your items accordingly, that uh, you make sure that you're not disturbed in the middle of the exam, that you're not taking breaks for food, and then you feel uh, on the final day as if you're just giving another mock. So make sure that you stimulate the actual exam on every one of your mocks and on the final day, you feel like you're just giving another mock. Also, when you start giving no mocks, then develop a strategy on how you want to attempt the sections, as in which order you want to go, to go in and how much time you want to take, take for each section. So this will also be based on what you found in the early stages of your preparation, wherein you've seen what is, what is taking you more or less time. Remember that you have two hours and those two hours should be focused not only on completing questions on time, but also ensuring the accuracy. So uh, I think that would be it. So uh, I wish you all the very best and I hope that you do very, very well in all your attempts. Thank you.